Let's say we have 2.85, and we're going to subtract from that 1.61. Now notice the decimals are lined up. That's all we have to make sure of. Then we begin in the right. What is 5 minus 1? 5 minus 1 is, of course, 4. What is 8 minus 6? You can count down. 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2. 8 minus 6 is 2. 2 minus 1 is, again, 1. And the decimal, again, just goes straight down in alignment with what's above, and the answer is 1.24. And that's the final answer for that problem. Next problem. Let's take a look at 0 0.96, and we're going to subtract from that 0 0.27. Now, 0 0.96 is pretty close to 1. 0.99 would be as close as you could get, then it would roll over to 1. 0.27 is, is much lower because 0.50 would be halfway. So this is almost to one, and this is way less than, than half. So we're going to subtract these two numbers. Start on the right. What is six minus seven? Well, that you can't do. Six is not big enough, so make it a 16 and borrow here to make that an eight to make it happen. 16, let's go down by seven. 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, nine. And we land on nine. 16 minus seven is nine. 8 minus 2 goes 7, 6. 8 minus 2 is 6. And the 0 minus 0 is 0. And the decimal point falls right out of the problem, 0 0.69. And that's the final answer. All right, next problem. What about 16.62? And we subtract from that 11.58. 11.58. So again, start in the right column. 2 minus 8. We can't do that because 2 is not large enough. Make it 12. Borrow, making this a 5. 12 minus 8. We have to start at 12 and go down. 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4. We land on 4. 4 goes in this column. 5 minus 5 is 0. 6 minus 1 is 5. And 1 minus 1 is also 0, but we don't need to write zeros in the leading parts of a number. We don't have to. You can if you want. And the decimal drops right out of a problem for 5.04. 5.04. All right. Making good progress. Let's take a look at the next problem. 0 0.45. And we'll subtract from that 0 0.29. All right. Far right column. 5 minus 9. Can't do that. 5's not big enough. Make it a 15. And this then becomes a 3. Now, start with 15 and subtract 9. 14, 13, 12, 11, 10. 9, 8, 7, 6. And we land on the number 6. So 6 goes here. 3 minus 2 is 1. 0 minus 0 is 0. And then we have the uh, decimal point that follows right down here. Now I told you, like we did 1 minus 1 is 0. I told you you don't have to put zeros in front. And it's true that you don't have to put 0 0.16. You could write it as 0.16. That's okay. Either answer is fine. But when you have a decimal point, it's very common to put a 0 in front just to show that there's no whole part. So I guess you don't have to put leading zeros in front of numbers, but when you have a decimal right there and you have a zero right in front of the decimal, we often do write a zero there. That's the one exception, I guess. All right, next problem. We are now past the halfway point. What about 2.69? And we'll subtract from that uh, 0.12. All right, what do we have here? Nine going down by two, eight, seven. 9 minus 2 is 7, 6 minus 1 is 5, and 2 minus 0 is 2. And the decimal flows right out and drops in for 2.57. 2.57. All right, next problem, number 6, 8.27. And we'll subtract from that 4.23. All right, in the far right, what do we have? Seven minus three, go down. Six, five, four, we land on four. Two minus two is zero. Eight minus four is four, and the decimal drops right out of a problem for 4.04. All right, almost done with this lesson. 0 0.65, subtract 0 0.32. Start in the far right. What do we have? 5 minus 2, go down. 4, 3. We land on 3. 6 minus 3 is 3. 0 minus 0 is 0, and the decimal just drops right down here for 0 0.33. And that's the final answer. 
All right, we only have three more problems and we are done with this lesson. Let's take a look at a larger number, 62.43, and we'll subtract from that 38.17. How do we do that? Same as always. Go in the right, three minus seven. We can't actually do that, so make this a 13 and borrow making this a three. All right then, 13, let's go down by seven. 12, 11, 10, nine, eight, seven, six, and we land on six. So 13 minus seven is six. Three minus one is two. Two minus eight, we run into problems there as well because two is not big enough. So we actually just make this a 12 and borrow to make this a five. 12, let's go down by eight. 11, 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, and we land on four. 12 minus eight is four and five minus three is two. And the decimal comes down here. So I use two colors, it's kind of funny looking, but 24.26 is the final answer. All right, only two more problems. What about 14.72? And we'll subtract from that 12.86. Now when you have two digits like this, uh, I guess I should have mentioned in the beginning, it, you can often just think about it as dollars and cents because we know that there are a hundred cents in a dollar. So you can say this is $12.86. This is $14.72. So when we subtract them, we're really, you can think of it as subtracting money here. So what would we have if we did the subtraction? Well, we cannot do two minus six, so we make this a 12, and we borrow to make that a six. 12 minus six. You might remember that actually, but if you don't, just go down. 11, 10, nine, eight, seven, six. 12 minus six is also six. What is six minus eight? Well, that we actually can't do either because it's not big enough. So this becomes a 16. We borrow making that one a three. 16 minus eight, go down. 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, nine, eight. And we land on eight. So 16 minus eight is also eight. Three minus two is one, and one minus one is zero, but we don't have to write it here, leading zeros here. We get an answer of 1.86. So if you had $14.72 and you took away or subtracted $12.86, what you will have is $1.86. Same thing here, $62.43 minus $38.17, you would have left over $24.26. So you can think of decimals as being money if it helps you remember what, what we're doing here. All right, last problem. Let's take a look at 8.65 and we'll subtract from that 7.35. So you can think of it as $8.65 minus $7.35. So we have uh, five minus five is zero, six minus three is three, Eight minus seven is one, and the decimal just comes right down here, so the answer we would have is 1.30. Another way of saying it is $1.30, if you're thinking of it in terms of money. So, subtracting decimals to hundredths is really important, just because you can think of it in terms of money, and we use money all the time. So, you have to line up those decimal points, do the subtraction, then drop the decimal into your answer, directly aligned with the other decimals that you have, and then you've completed the problem. That concludes part one, solve all of these yourself. When you feel like you're getting the right answers, follow me to part two, we will get more practice and wrap up the concept of subtracting decimals to the hundredths place. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.